Greetings. Welcome again, everybody, man. Another another little lecture we're going to get into. But first of all, I want to um, make an announcement. I'm going to be releasing my first official book, which will be available for hard copy, actual physical copy. If you, um, and that's going to be uh, Thriving After a Narcissist. So that's going to be coming out. I'm going to be telling, it's going to be the story of, you know, what got me here to being on YouTube and how I, you know, you know, collected all of the information and became uh, what I am today uh, within this community of uh, narcissist survivors. So be in tune. I'll keep you all updated on when it's going to be released, but um, definitely going to be a good read, a lot of information in there and you know, telling about, you know, my journey through this and how I got here and my experience through what I went through. So <clears throat> definitely be on the lookout for that. And I will keep y'all updated when it is coming out. Um, we still have some time. We got some things to sew up. Uh, and once that's done, I'm definitely going to be putting y'all on to it so that y'all can get y'all copy. Anyway, moving on, we're talking about you know why why narcissists heat check and the and, and 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 especially after a period of time when you've been gone okay when you've managed to go past that that initial you know going back and forth with them and the heat check is this is this usually happens when you have made a firm stand on your boundaries and not reaching back out to the narcissist, okay? This is when you just said, I mean, I've had it. I'm done. There's nothing to go back to, and you've moved on. Now, I got to bring you through the phases of how a narcissist perceives you standing your ground after they have had such a stronghold on you. You see, narcissists don't take you serious at all to begin with. And your first initial attempt to assert your boundaries is most certainly laughed at by the narcissist. Why? Because they've seen this performed before with other sources only to be broken, um, you know, by, you, you know, a few days or weeks. You know, narcissist is used to seeing that they know how it goes down when they interact with people. And you're not the first one that they've done this to, all right? The narcissist knows they still got their hooks deeply embedded in you. Even though you've left, uh, you're not totally removed from, you know, the emotional presence of, of, of still desiring and wanting them, you know? And they know that as the time goes and you're not around them and they're absent, you'll more than likely miss them. Because through this process, you got to understand there were times when they would do stuff to you and then they make up and really go out their way to make up to you only to do the same thing that they made up for uh, you know, within a week or so later. And this has been something that you've been accustomed to and you can get used to the feeling of breaking up to make up. You know, people talk about makeup sex is the best. Well, that's it's actually toxic because you're, you're taking on abuse, too, in order to get that feeling, that rush of them making up to you. Not a healthy position to be in or be uh, recycling in a situation. And, you know, you're wasting your time by threatening to leave or pleading for change or, or things like that if you stay gone for a while thinking that if I'm gone it will motivate the narcissist to stick around or or become willing to cooperate with you better and this is all wishful thinking you got to understand that it's just wishful thinking the narcissist is they 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 know how to use different coping mechanisms to deal with certain things like this they know how to escape in their mind and hold off and compartmentalize these situations so that it doesn't affect them the way it affects you. And as the narcissist, as, as, as narcissist, uh, the narcissist knows all too well the process of 
you know, human emotions and will laugh at the thought of you doing this because they, 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 it's a game to them. And now, you know, many of you have managed to no contact a narcissist for a, a long enough period of time, which is unfamiliar to the typical length of time that they are accustomed to seeing from you, you know, from it's, it's out of your typical behavior. This is when it starts to get their attention more, you know, and after several failed attempts to hoover you, which used to work, they'll hoover you and you'll come back in and the little makeup come, you know, whatever they do to make up is effective for a while. And they know that you, you, they know that you're addicted to that cycle. That's the thing. The narcissist knows that you've become addicted to this cycle, right? And these Hoover attempts, once they, narcissist, the once they failed enough, the narcissist become worried and even angry and will usually counter by, you know, going out and aggressively entertaining new sources if they don't have one on deck. They usually always do. But they will go out to aggressively uh, entertain and, and, and get a new source to triangulate you with once you do return, because they still believe you're going to return back wanting them. See, in their minds, you're going to realize the mistake you made. And this is why it's so important to when you do no contact and move on, you have to be fully ready to to be gone. Because when you do come back, they, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a game to them. And now they want to punish you. Now they even take you less serious. And they've already set up the situation, you know, to when you, if you get weak, and this is why I tell people don't, don't fall into it. Because if you get weak and you, 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 you're thinking, you, you're sitting up there listening to that Carl Thomas and you call if you call her, she, she's going, you know, um, you're going to get a whole different side of them. Now, they were hoping that you called, but they already set things up in the period of time that you managed to go, let's say, a, a year of no contact. They were waiting. They really strongly believed that you were going to call back at some point. And when you do, you usually going to hear, look, um... Um, look, I'm, I'm, I don't even, why are you calling me? I'm in a good place right now. Um, I, I'm not working at Publix no more. I got a good job. I got a full-time job at, at T-Mobile. Um, look, baby, look, I am not for play play. You should have never left me. You should have never left me. And I got a new boo and we doing good. I'm happy. I'm blessed. You can keep it moving. You should have never left me. Ooh, that's what they hit you with. And so now they were waiting. They were just waiting to throw that on you. And now it's even a more crushing book because it's like it makes you feel like because you left, this is what happened. So they, 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 they purposely get into situations where they can throw that up in your face. And you're going to be met with that aggression, like I said, or with something to hurt you. If you do try to go back, that's all it's about at that point. So no contact and not breaking for more than six months to a year. Um, the, the narc might, you know, they might they might have ran their course with the new supply. Right. And now they're they're they're, you know, trying to go back to that grade A supply, which is you, even though they may have told you that when you reach back out. Right. So you're thinking, oh, it's, it's over. And so but as we know, narcissists always every supply is going to end up failing at some point. So they will come back. And the reason why they'll come back is because that time you reached out and they was able to hurt you with that. Now they come back looking for the grade A. Now they come back after you. You know, but now it's it, the, 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 the Hoover attempt is disguised because they know what they said to you. They know that, that they, you know, put you down, told you all of this stuff like they were good. But now they're hitting you back up, you know, so they want to uh, appear like they're not really concerned with you. You know, like, you know, they're not really tripping on you. They're just, you know, reaching out and and and. Most people don't understand this. 
when you leave the narcissist or manage to stay away, you're the one that's that's got away, that's broke through this. Because not everyone gets this access, uh, get the access to this information after dealing with a narcissist and continues to 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 stay out of the funhouse, right? With with these deranged individuals. So everybody doesn't get this after a breakup or going through it with a narcissist. They don't come across this information, so they still go back and forth playing in that playhouse with them. And this is what narcissists expect. But if you're the one who managed to switch the whole game up so cold on them, you kind of like mess their ego up a little bit more than somebody else who is still entertaining them after all they've done. And those of us who do get the information realize that the situation is never going to get better or change. You know, it's going to continue on with the same thing that has been going on. So people who do get it, we're less susceptible to the repeats. And there's different tiers of these heat checks that narcissists do. Usually, and, and I'll break these down, like the three tiers that you can usually find after a, a lengthy period of, of no contact. These, these, these heat checks, which is trying to see where you're at in the mind and in life. So it's not going to be as direct before as the, the initial Hoovers when you first, you know, got away from them. And it wasn't that long a period of time because to them, you were still caught on them. But if you've moved on, it's been a while. They don't know what's going on in your life. So they got a heat check. See where you at. And and that tier three heat checking is usually like, um, you know, um, hey, you're going to come in and get your clothes because I'm going to throw them away. Something like that. And they're just trying to see, do you do you do, do you want to get your clothes from me? And this is so they can even see you again, too. It's been a while. They may miss that grade A supply and they want to see that grade A again because they see you again. They know that they got something to work back into your head or you'll hear. Look, um, I left my Rob Ross paint set at your house and I need that. You know, I'm about to start doing um, Picasso's at Piedmont Park on the weekends and I'm gonna need that. And you know, they ain't never touched that one day ever since you was with them. Now they didn't found this new hobby that they want to start and they just happen to have left it there. And they and they, they like to leave stuff at P at your house or stuff like that when this stuff happens so that they have a reason to return in case a situation like this happens. Or another tier three uh, heat check is, you know, I was just checking on you. You know, I had a dream about you and um, the Lord put it in my spirit to reach out to you to make sure you was OK. And I'm just wanting to know, you know, so it'll be stuff like that. And those is real minor. It's not heavy, you know, but it's like, OK, that didn't work. Now they moved to tier two heat checking. And this is where it's like, um. They'll, they'll, they'll come with, like, I was watching something on TV that reminded me of you and it, it made me miss you. And I just wanted to let you know you was on my mind. Something like that, right? That's that tear. They want you to, to know, like, they, and they're, they're humble now. You know, all the aggression that they had is gone. They're humble now when they're, when they're approaching you and when they're speaking to you. Or you get that tear one. And the tier one heat check is kind of like it's it's very in depth, and it's designed to make you think that there was a change. Tier one might be like, um, I've been doing a lot of thinking about, you know, what went down between us and how my behaviors was unacceptable and, you know, out of control. I just didn't see it at the time, and I've been going through a lot since I left you and I, I, I realized how much I love I love you love me and I loved you and I've been doing all kind of things to help myself, you know, um, to be a better person, which I didn't know I was being at the time with you. I didn't know I was being the way I was being. And you've always been such a pinnacle person in my life and if I could just speak to you, you know, if if, if not if I can't speak to you, is there any advice you can bless me with, you know, please and thank you. Fingers crossed emoji.
right? Now, they didn't came up with this whole Lifetime Network movie script that's not even, like, where they're feeling, really. But it was something good to really test a couple of things, right? They want to see, do you still care? See, their egos are bruised, and they can't accept the fact that you didn't move on, and they feel defeated. So they're doing this because... Um, not because they change, but because they want to see if you still care. Do you still have any fire and desire for them? Shout out Rick James and Tina Marie too. Rest in peace on that. But um, they want to see if you got any fire and desire. And also because what they thought they could replace you with failed completely. And now you cold as ice to them. And it don't make no sense because the way you used to be all wrapped up and involved in them, you're so, you're just ghost to them now. The heat check is all about seeing if you still have anything left from them or are you just mad? Are you, are you trying to, you know, show that you're doing some revenge or have you really moved on? Have you really moved on? Have you really totally understand? You, do you totally understand what they're about? Know that they're damaged and that they're no good for you? Or are you playing the game like they play the game? This is all it's about. So you have to realize this. And then you move on from, you know, to thriving and surviving. And you, you're in a better place. That's all I have to say for this video. Like, hit the like button, y'all. Um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Again, Thriving After a Narcissist, the book that, you know, my book about my stories and be coming out. I will keep y'all updated. Still have a little bit of time, but just wanted to put y'all on to that. Let y'all know that's in the works. And uh, hope y'all taking care of yourselves. Till next time, have a good one.